Before we get started, I wanted to mention my Discord. Check it out, I'm on there all the time. Links are in the description. So the John Cedars channel talked about his leaked Jehovah's Witness video, where the leadership of the church is telling people not to touch themselves. Strap in, people. It's gonna get weird. So here's one of my biggest complaints about the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. I remember when I was in the religion, I wasn't allowed to talk to anybody on the outside. And of course, a lot of the people in my congregation were older, so I just didn't have many friends. And on top of that, they all had this weird cult persona on 24-7. So I was raised to act like the mashup of the ideal vision of a madman from the early 1900s, Charles Taze Russell, and an even madder man from the 1930s, Joseph Rutherford. Their twisted vision of how people should interact with each other was formed by a combination of their own isolation from society due to the veneration they received through their leadership positions and an old-timey perspective of the world, further filtered by their interpretation of biblical examples of how people acted 4,000 years ago. So right off the bat, we're starting out on some f***ed up shaky ground here. Any product of that environment is going to have some seriously odd mannerisms and social problems. But to make things worse, now the current leadership of Jehovah's Witnesses are getting even stranger with this whole no tight pants rule. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but one of the leaders of Jehovah's Witnesses has made it his life's mission to outlaw tight pants. It seems like a troll, right? Did the guy mention it once in a meeting? Oh, tight pants look terrible. Real Jehovah's Witnesses shouldn't wear them. No, this guy talks about it everywhere he goes. He has this whole outline for when he gives public talks across the world. It goes something like this. It's the metrosexual look. We've addressed that in the past. We've said things about it. But what's happened now, it's really caught on more. Now, metrosexual, that's the, the tight suit jacket and the tight pants. Uh, better known as tight pants. <laughs> and uh, they are tight, I mean tight, all the way down to the ankles. And that is not modest, brothers. No. It's not appropriate. It's not sound of mind. But like I've been telling uh, others, and, and this is a fact, the homosexuals that are designing these clothes they like you in tight pants. That's who likes it, not spiritual people. This is a little off subject, but in my research for the right clip, I came across this even more interesting clip. So I wanted to play it for you. This is the tight pants guy, Tony Morris, talking about his time before he was a Jehovah's Witness when he was in the Vietnam War. See, I was uh, in Vietnam, a medic in that war. Uh, I've seen what happens to humans when they're mangled. You see it on TV some of that, well, until you smell human flesh burning from a helicopter crash, people that look like uh, humans, like a hot dog on a grill, blackened and splitting open. I know what's coming at Armageddon. A lot of dead people. A lot of dead people. So it's absolutely urgent for us to get our minds off ourselves. And let's get out there and help as many as we can, because when it comes, it's going to be numbing for you. You think seeing a deer mangled on the side of the road from a truck that hit it is upsetting? You see humans like that. So it's going to be numbing. So back to tight pants. This is a great example of what happens when people are totally isolated from regular society and nobody questions their opinions, surrounded by sycophants. They can say anything and people will lap it up, so we can compound the new rules on top of the old ones. The behavior of the members will keep getting stranger and stranger. So let's get into this Pillowgate video and see what kind of shit they're pushing. Here at Bethel, we have some of the most outstanding young men in the organization. We are grateful to Jehovah for you and want to commend you for how hard you've worked to meet the high requirements to serve here. So this video is actually a leaked video put out by the Jehovah's Witnesses headquarters. As far as I know, every Jehovah's Witness who comes to live on their compound, which is basically what it is, a compound, watches this video. That's why it sounds like an initiation video. Now it gets crazy. There is no reason to be embarrassed about what we're going to discuss. To begin, let's see three ways in which Jehovah's Word helps you to keep your personal habits clean. 
The first way you can do this is by avoiding tight-fitting clothes that can identify you with homosexuality. There's the new governing body member's bias slipping through. Tony Morris has decided that he wants to die on this hill, and he's going to make sure that everybody else dies with him. He's kind of the leader here, so whatever he says goes. And here we are talking about tight pants in a Bethel indoctrination video. What kind of clothes are we talking about? Some outfits are designed to feminize a man's appearance, as homosexuals try to do, especially displaying the buttocks and genitals. Why? Because it makes it harder to tell the difference between a homosexual and a heterosexual man, making homosexuals blend in. Oh my God, this is so f***ing funny. These people are delusional. I wonder if they realize that homosexuals actually blend in naturally. They have a natural camouflage mechanism called skin. It looks exactly like straight people's skin, so it's basically impossible to tell the difference. Part of me wonders if they've ever seen a homosexual in person, and the other part of me thinks they're all closeted homosexuals. Does the way you dress show that you share his viewpoint? A second way you need to keep on guard is resisting the unclean habit of masturbation. The God's Love Book explains that masturbation is the stroking or rubbing of the genital organs, commonly resulting in an orgasm. So, does a person have to use their hands to masturbate? Oh, please, no. Oh, my God. I only watched part of this video because I wanted to be surprised while I debunked it. Is this really what we're talking about? What did I get myself into? For example, say a brother wears an undergarment that's so tight it rubs his penis as he moves around. He gets aroused and even ejaculates. Is he masturbating? Yes, he is. Oh, okay. I understand the format now. We're going to be giving a bunch of awkward, strange, outlandish edge cases and determine if it's peeling the banana or not. This is actually going to be entertaining. How about having an emission of semen at night? maybe even after an erotic dream. Is that masturbation? No. Jehovah made that a part of a man's reproductive system, and it happens without any deliberate stimulation. Even so, when this happens to you, it would be good to examine whether you were dwelling on sexual thoughts before going to sleep. Okay, so he's saying it's only a sin if we accidentally saw something that got us all turned on before we went to sleep. Otherwise, it's natural. I wonder if it would be a sin if we had a dream about a dude. Not saying I've ever done that or anything. I'm totally 100% straight. I promise. I'm not gay. Totally straight. Could you have been sleeping in a position that stimulated you? Such as with a blanket or pillow held tightly between your legs? And there's the meaning behind the Pillowgate thing. You have to imagine that this stuff has actually happened. They're probably addressing these seeming edge cases because it's been a problem in Bethel. That's what happens when you completely sexually repress people. Bethelites are sometimes allowed to be married, but they aren't allowed to have children. And unmarried people are prioritized over married couples. And of course, he's made it clear that you aren't supposed to yank it, so you get those 30-year-old guys who've never been married, which means they've never f either, and they've never touched themselves. That means a light breeze will set it off. What do you expect? Consider a situation. A group of single brothers has a meal together, and after most leave, two of them remain behind in the room drinking alcohol. At one point, one asks the other if he has ever woken up with an erection. Their conversation starts to touch on sexual matters. Are they flirting? Their conversation can arouse sexual desires in them, even though they're of the same sex. First of all, that's never actually happened to me. I'm going to venture a guess and say if you get sexually aroused by a conversation like this, you're probably gay. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But straight people don't usually get aroused by that type of thing. Here's what they're doing. They've created this strange dynamic between men and women. They aren't allowed to knock on doors with them unless they're married to each other. 
So you have to be extremely careful about how you act around people of the opposite sex. It leads to extreme social awkwardness. And now they're creating that dynamic between not just men and women, but everybody. You have to watch your language and your behavior and your actions around everybody, regardless of gender, because you might have dirty thoughts. This is the saddest sh I've ever seen. They're imploding in on themselves, and while they're at it, they're ruining more people's social lives. I just hope I can live to see the day when this corporation sinks. Anyways, that's all I've got for you for today. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. And join my Discord. Thanks for watching, guys.